you see somebody praying in an airport and prostrated in an airport praying, don't call police security. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, but the one thing that I did understand was I wasn't going to be a Muslim. I wasn't. That gonna, was clear. That was clear. That was not an option right. for me. She I says, Mr. Altabelli says, well, I have a good friend that converted to Islam. And from what I understand, it's very close to, you know, the Christian beliefs. There's things there's very. Her teacher's telling her this now. Her teacher told her the this. The Quran is, an, is another miracle. And it's a miracle that is unchanged over 1,400 years. You know, she said, you, you, you can do whatever you want, Dad. Just don't try to convert me, you know. And uh, it's funny, she has a teacher she really respects in school. And there, she, there she must be a lot of people like me that had what they felt, they, uh, th they knew what Islam was, and they're wrong. We both yes. ended up in tears. Wow. I mean, we just both ended up in tears. I was so happy. I, I told her, I said, I'm, I don't have to go through what Dr. Lawrence Brown went no, through I never, you know, when least. I was baptized when I was young or had these experiences in church and in Christianity. I'd never felt in my heart what I what I feel now. I never, I never, and I think a lot of people don't understand how closely, you know, the Christianity is to to the Muslim faith when it comes to. I, I had no idea, you know, N Noah, Moses, Jesus, peace be upon him. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, I didn't, I did not understand this. Where, where and most Bob people, is here, because he was sincere. And he's ready to say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammadan abduhu rasulullah. Which, this is the Dean Show. Assalamu alaikum, greetings of peace. Welcome to the Dean Show. And I have our friend Bob Wax from Boston. How are you, Mr. Bob Wax? I'm fantastic. Thank you very much. How are you doing? Peace be with you. Peace be with you. How's Thank it going? You. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. You know, you know what's interesting? I yes. have a talk coming up. I'm supposed to be in New Jersey and New York and they want me to talk about why Americans are choosing Islam I got a American here and maybe you can help me with this because you're one of those Americans who are choosing to become a Muslim accepting Islam is that correct that's absolutely correct and you didn't want to be in the closet about it I don't want to be in the closet about it. Yeah. no I was actually that's the exact phrase that I I use that I was uh, committed to not being a closet Muslim. I got that from you, yeah. Yeah, yes, absolutely. I think that's very important. So tell us, what, what was it about Islam that had you now wanting to accept it? You haven't officially, I mean, uh, you're, you're supposed to be taking your Shahada, you're ready to take your Shahada, uh, but what was it about Islam that had you come to work? You're on the Dean Show now. I, and I can't tell you how uh, excited I am to be on the Dean Show. Um, a lot of uh, my education, I think, came from, you know, the input that I got from your YouTube videos and the podcasts. And sure. I've really been uh, chewing up a lot of information. A very good friend of mine um, has helped educate me, not uh, not through just, not through a ton of conversation, but feeding me information. And that was really what I felt I needed because I had a lot of questions. And I, I grew up a uh, Christian, Baptist. I was baptized. Um, I, I went to Baptist church with my, my sister. My family was, was um, you know, we, we attended a Baptist church alone, just the, the two of us, you know. You and your sister? My sister and I. And my sister has a strong Christian faith to this, to this day. Um, but I've gone through just... Uh, a lot of things I didn't understand, I questioned, and um, wasn't really practicing Christian, even though Christian Christianity, I believe, is is quite easy to practice. But I um, I rebelled in a way that it just because I I didn't understand. But the one thing that I did understand was I wasn't going to be a Muslim. I wasn't. That gonna, was clear. That was clear. That was not an option for me. I was not going to be a Muslim. Not a chance. Even if I said, even if for a guy, let's put this in context and please don't lose your place where you're at. This is just, I was just thinking if someone said, it, it's like you saying, I'm not going to submit my will to God. There's no way because that's what a Muslim means. I know, but so I didn't understand. Would that. you ever say that though, as a God fearing, God loving person, I'm never going to submit my will to God, would you? <laughs> of course <laughs> but not. But you were saying that. I was saying But that. not knowing what a Muslim actually means because no a Muslim idea. is one who submits to the will of God. That's the, by definition what a Muslim means. Absolutely. So what happened from there? Well, uh, getting educated. Um, I, I did sort of uh, recommit to exploring further, learning more, um, getting involved in a church. Um, and I think it's a beautiful church. Um, 
uh, had a great outreach uh, men's group. I was involved in, uh, in, in involved in Saturday men's group, you know, sessions and and I I started to realize that I, I this wasn't a path I could just take on my own, um, which was a lot of my indoctrination as 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 a young as a young person with my grandfather that you know beware of man and beware of church beware of organized religion beware 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 this is coming from your this, my grandfather was a big influence yeah. in my life and but he would pick things out of the bible that justified um you know whatever message he was trying to to give me the same way that people pick things out of the quran and and to justify things that are that are that are not accurate but um, the point is that when I really started to learn and when I started to study what what it meant, what what it, what it was about, um, all the questions that I had were answered, and 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 answered very quickly for me. It, it was it, it was an amazing path, and for the first time in my life, you know, I never when I was baptized when I was young or had these experiences in church and in Christianity, I'd never felt in my heart what I what I feel now. Um, I don't know that I can fully explain the difference, mm -hmm. but I feel like maybe my heart was hardened in a way and it was certainly consumed with life and career and making money or whatever um, to, uh, you know, to the detriment of my family, my faith, everything. Um, where now th through the five pillars of, of y you know, of, of the Muslim faith, it really has grounded me towards what's important, you know. You've actually is, started doing some of these, is I've, that right? I've, st I, I've been studying it and I have been praying. I don't, I, I, I think it's important I have, I, I have recited um, the Shahada, and, yeah. you know, but, but to, to myself, and I also think that's important to do that in front of you yes, know, your to, brothers and sisters. Yeah, so now you're welcome to your family of over 1.5 billion so people know now that you're there you know they're there for you you make that connection with your family i mean if you have right. some family out there you want to know who they are right 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 and the shocking thing to me was i never i never and i think a lot of people don't understand how closely you know the christianity is to to the muslim faith when it comes to i, I had no idea you know noah moses jesus peace be upon him mm -hmm. you know i just I didn't. I did not understand this, and most people don't. Um, and unfortunately, especially in the last maybe 15 years or so, there have been the extreme, you know, you know, terrorist actions that have just tainted, and and mm -hmm. media has done a, a serious disservice to to the faith. Um, but my eyes have really been open to that. Yes. And I I was watching something recently where you know if you picked out the verses where it talks about you know, peace and love versus war in the Quran. It's like 140 something to yeah. 17. Don't quote me on those numbers, but it's, you know, yeah. it, the Quran is about love, peace, forgiveness, surrender. Yeah, you can easily do the same thing. They had a man who was going out there and taking verses from the Bible and verses from the Quran. And he said, OK, did you see that video? And then he said, what book do you think this is? They thought it was the Quran. And then he was showing those verses, you know, and then they said, no, no, at the end, it was actually the Bible. Did you see that? They did a, I, a social experiment test? I, I did. It, you know, and so you it, can easily play that game. That's easy. to. It, it is. And I don't know. That's that the part is very frustrating for me. The more I learn, the more frustrated I get yeah. with with it's it's just doing such a disservice to, yeah. to the faith. There's a for any academic out there tuning in and they just you know want to look more. I often quote Robert Pape. He's a terrorist expert. This man has put more time into this area of ex and is an expert in terrorism. And he says, Robert Pape, that Islam, he's saying that this, these uh, terrorist attacks that happen, these are pol politically motivated. This has, these are just is geopolitical. This, right. this is not because of the religion of Islam. No, it's not. And, you know, those acts of terrorism have killed more Muslims than anybody else. That's profound, yeah. So, you know, if, if it was of of the faith would that happen no it's it's not yeah, obviously so, it's not. so the difference between you and someone behind the keyboard right and just reading headlines is you actually you went deeper and with a sincere heart open mind and you really started to research because you wouldn't be here if you weren't sincere and you weren't really doing your homework well that's a good point i wouldn't i wouldn't be here without the opportunity to to learn and you're not going to learn by reading 
the headlines, um, you're definitely going to go in a different direction if you read most most headlines. But I was given the opportunity to to learn the truth and uh, sources that I, I trust and 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 still question. You know, I still question everything. But whenever I do question, the answer comes, and that's never happened to me in my life and in mm -hmm. my faith. Yeah. Yeah. T tell us, you were sharing s the experience you had actually with your, with your wife and your daughter. Uh, um, yes. So um, obviously, I was scared, and I listened to uh, a YouTube video from Dr. Lawrence Brown and the, the the trials that he went through with his family, and he lost everything. You know, a beautiful home, a guest home that was probably the size of my yes, my I'm, home. I, yeah, that's my brother, know, Dr. Uh, Lawrence. You know, Brown, yeah. and living in a really shabby apartment, and he really lost it all, and um, it scared me. It scared me. I didn't know how my family would react, um, but you know, I'm ordering. They see that I'm ordering through Amazon, a Quran. I'm ordering a prayer rug. You, you know, I, I'm doing these things. And my wife, I, 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 I'm so th thankful that she's been very supportive. She's not saying I'm with you, yeah. but she's I'm saying I'm you. listening. You she's know? not like, uh, what was the former president? You either <laughs> with us or against us? <laughs> yes, right, exactly. So she's not giving you one of those, huh? No, not at all. Yeah. Um, so supportive, but not saying I'm with you. Yeah. But the more she's learning and, and, and everything else, she has questions, and those, those answers are coming to her as, as well. But, but that's, that's important. You don't expect someone just to blindly follow her husband. What's their sincerity there, right? But she's at least, she's now, because one of the greatest forms of ignorance, as a great uh, thinker said, is to reject something you know right. nothing about. Right. So at least she's open to learn. Right. And, and you know, the beautiful thing about the Quran, the first thing is obviously read, read, read. Yes, Iqra, you yes. Know, three times, read, read, read. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and so in coercion i've learned a lot about coercion and you know and that's 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 not the right approach and especially from somebody that i feel i'm still very ignorant in the in the faith um you know it's not going to come from me but read learn you know learn on your own and she's done that i have to share a share a share a story we were we were watching a video the other morning and um it was fascin it was fascinating and it was from a, a, a Christian, or a, excuse me, a religious scholar who is Christian, but the way he was presenting the Islamic faith, you, you thought he was Muslim, right? Yes. And um, she pulled out her like uh, journal or you know, her, her, her task manager and she started to you know, look at it and write it. And I says, well, don't you think this is fascinating? Are you not watching this? She goes, no, I'm making notes. Wow, she's, <laughs> she's even taking notes. <laughs> she's taking notes. So that was, the, you know, that was just, we both ended up in tears. Wow. I mean, we just both ended up in tears. I was so happy. I, I told her, I said, I'm, I don't have to go through what Dr. Lawrence Brown went through, you know, at least, you know. I, um, but I had struggles with my daughter, my, old, my oldest daughter. Um, you know, she said, you, you, you can do whatever you want, Dad. Just don't try to convert me, you know. And uh, it's funny. She has a teacher she really respects in school, and she she um, we we didn't have a great conversation in the morning. I didn't feel I handled it well when I dropped her off at school. She had a half day. I went to pick her up, and she says, "Well, I went to Mr. Altabelli, my teacher, and I told him you converted to Islam, and I almost had a heart attack." I'm like, "Oh, wait a minute, you know?" <laughs> and uh, she says. And Mr. Altabelli says, well, I have a good friend that converted to Islam. And from what I understand, it's very close to, you know, the Christian beliefs. There's things there's very... Her teacher's telling her this now. Her teacher told her this, wow. which I never would have dreamed of, uh -huh. you know. And I just think every, every time that I've had a struggle, um, and there have been many of them, and I know there are more to come, I just have faith that they're going to, you know, they're going to be able to be worked through. It's amazing. God, God Almighty Allah is the best of planners. So it's, it's just to see these things, how they're just coming out uh, perfectly planned. It's amazing. Absolutely. So what would you say? What, what can I go back to tell people? What would you say now with your experience? You can't speak for all Americans, but what are, say, the top three things you would say about Islam and as to why Americans are choosing Islam? Well, I believe that the truth is being spread. Um, it has to be because I, I feel like there's got there there must be a lot of people like me that had what they felt they uh, th they knew what Islam was and they're wrong and so so ignorance is a big part of this so being educated 
um, is, is number one, is to read. You know, the, the Quran is, is, is a miracle, one of the, one of the most amazing miracles. And, and Jesus, peace be upon him, you know, performed miracles. The Quran is, an, is another miracle, and it's a miracle that is unchanged over 1,400 years. And all of, there's no way that you can dispute, if you really dig into it, there's no way that you can dispute science, you, 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 you know, um, the expanding of the universe, embryology, you know, all of this is described very clearly. These were all questions that I had. Uh, my family is, you know, uh, science, engineering background, very that's mathematical. What you do for, that's what you do for a living? You're uh, I'm in business, but my, my father was a um, uh, mathematics professor yeah. who then ended up in business. Mm -hmm. And um, all, most of my family are engineers and, you know, that sort of thing. Very educated people. V very, educa very educated. And, um, and there are, are uh, agnostics. And, and my father is Christian, um, a tr true believer. And you know, and I'm also thankful that no, no matter what, I feel, you know, I'm going to be in paradise with my father. I, I feel, I feel that in my heart. But um, I also have an opportunity to help educate. You know, and I feel that this is a part of being, you know, closet. Are you going to be a closet Muslim in your in your faith, or are you going to put out what you really believe? And maybe it can have an effect on somebody. Yeah. But that's not up to me. But all you can do is share the truth. Yeah, this is. I, I just get so um, excited and to hear people like yourself who um, who have given it a shot, who've had an open mind, and who are sick of being lied to. And there's really good Americans out there. I'm an American, uh, Bosnian background, but you know, and that's one of the reasons I do the program because I know if people give. I was I was I was doing an interview with a with a scholar from uh, Florida, Miami. And when we were done, he said, man, they just got to give us a shot. Give Islam a shot. That's it. Because we're not getting, you know, if you really, this will help to make society, make the communities better places. I mean, but there's so much effort, money being spent to tarnish the image of Islam. And you're actually, by doing that, you're just causing more havoc in the world. And I would also say, you know, despite that, it's the uh, fastest growing religion. Despite, that's another thing, you despite know, all that, so it's a prophecy that was prophesized by Prophet Muhammad, <laughs> yeah. and it's ha coming to be, right? Right. Yeah, so, I mean, in spite of, of, all of, of that, uh, you know, Allah's at work, and in, in, in it's oh. fastest growing religion. And another th thing that, you know, if you really put, the the extremists um you know in into their category yeah. appropriate category if you look at the the religion of islam as a whole and it's how many billion uh, almost like almost two billion almost 1.8 1.6 1.8 yeah, yeah something like that billion it's point zero 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 two five percent there's something like that yeah. ten thousand in one one group there's seventy thousand in another group yeah. you know, i mean it's just such small numbers that Unfortunately, they just get a lot of attention. But but you have, I mean, functioning extremists, I mean, like the KKK, who have over like 200 functioning branches in the world today. If they're functioning, they're operating, you can go sign up, you can fill out an application, right? And you also have to go to, you have to attend Sunday, uh, is it Protestant, or, or, or I, I don't know what the, what the Christian faith is, yeah. but they're Christians. Yeah, but we don't judge, obviously, Christianity by the KKK. Okay, right, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So we got to grow out past this. I mean, people who are academic, who are sincere, who are open minded. I mean, even just a layman who just wants to connect with one God. He's confused with all the confusion out there about God, but now Islam comes to him and says, submit to the Creator, not the creation. One God, worship Him alone. That makes sense. How, when you heard that, I mean, when you, because over and over, the theme of the Quran is that pure monotheism, worship God, just alone, not setting up partners or equals. Jesus is a messenger of God, just like Moses, Abraham. They all came with the same message, simple, the warning, the glad tidings, paradise. If you do good, you become a good human being, all under the, the pretense of, 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 of God consciousness. What, what, what's going through your mind? You have a big smile. So, <laughs> well, it was so easy. That part was very easy for me. Because of, you know, when, when I say in one sense that it was a negative that my grandfather said, beware, you know, um, that part was easy for me to accept. There is one God. One. And my grandfather believed there was one God. Yeah. Um, but I also believe that there's a community 
of faith. There's a, there's a responsibility to, you know, to share, to, 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 to share the, the knowledge of, you know, the truth and um, not be a closet, you know, Muslim. Uh -huh. um, but so that part was very easy for me to, to accept. And, I, and I'll tell you a comment that my wife made. We were watching, we were watching a video and they, it was talking about Jesus and the, we were talking about the Trinity and, and Jesus being God. And she, she, and she grew up Lutheran and she says, well, I never really viewed Jesus as God. And I said, well, did you practice the, you know, these certain things? She says, well, I, I did, but I guess I never really in my heart felt. So, so, for, so I think a lot of people and a lot of Christians and a lot of, it's not gonna be that hard to accept. Um, I do believe it, and you know, in my readings and from what I've read in the Quran, that we are the the the, 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 the there are brothers and sisters in, in faith. You know, certainly that we have our there's differences, but um, there's so many similarities. Yeah. You know, so for me, it was very easy. Yeah, I often make that statement that we have brothers and sisters in humanity. We are the same father, Adam, right? And then you have brothers and sisters, siblings now from the bloodline. And then now you make that transition from worshiping a human being, worshiping Jesus, worshiping the creation. You come to worshiping only the creator. You become now the brothers in faith, yeah. sisters in faith. You know what I mean? Right. But still, if you choose, Islam gives you. That's between you and your creator. We yeah. do not condemn people and write them a one-way visa. You know, say, hey, you, John, you, Joe, you're going to hell. That's between them and God. Right. But associating partners with God, there are grave consequences. It's clear in the Quran, right? Hellfire is there, paradise for, for, for a reason. So like you said, getting the truth out. But at the end, now we still deal with people justly, humanely, kindly. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, and, and when I... Um, I'll share with you one of the problems that I had in my in, in my family with, with this, and I have, you know, a beautiful wife and two amazing girls that I'm trying to raise as independent young young women, and the misconception that they had about how, um, or that I had uh, about how women were viewed in Islam, and you know, the first thing I learned was. The fastest growing segment of the of the Muslim faith are women. Mm -hmm. Why would that happen? Why would that happen if they were mistreated and and uh, y you know um, you know restricted in so many ways? And when you learn the the reality of it, and it, it it's the complete opposite of that. I mean, yeah. fourteen hundred years ago, they were given the right to vote and to you know, have inheritance and which would, if you, you have to place yourself back in those times where that would have to be absolutely unheard of. Yeah, that was totally like we would say, uh, like our, our, our friend Dean Muhammad was saying, this was totally like the liberal, right? Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So. So now there, I mean, that's what I often tell people, go speak to the Muslim woman, go and talk to her, the one that's observing uh, Islam and who's living it and she's chosen to dress like Mary, the mother of Jesus, like the nuns that are out there, she's living a God-conscious life. Ask her. Yeah. And most people now, they. Uh, why do you think it is? People get stuck. You have uh, fab amazing people like your your wife, who's open-minded. She's open heart. You know, her mind's open. She's willing to learn. But have you come across other people now that you've talked to about this, and you can just see that they're not even giving, like I said, it a shot. They're not even willing to to listen. Where you can say, look, yeah. just hear me out. If you like what I have to say, take it. If you don't reject it, that's it. Yeah, I have good friends um, that you know I, I I've shared shared with, and for the most part, I've gotten support. Um, you know, I'll give you one instance where I was at was at dinner with uh, my wife and I were at dinner with a couple, and we weren't even talking about me and my faith, but um, somehow Islam or um, Muslims came up, and this was the. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. So you didn't yeah. bring it up. I, I, I don't recall exactly how it came up. Um, you know, maybe I did. Okay. Because um, it seems like it's coming up at, at, at just your random conversation. It was in random conversation. <laughs> and it wasn't, oh, you know, Michelle, my wife saying, oh, hey, Bob's converted to Islam. And, you know, you know. The, pe the person is doing one of these. He literally like did that. And I, I, I was shocked. You know, you know, I was shocked. And at the same time, 
you know, I understand because we are, we are fed so much information that is, uh, you know, untrue and unfair. Um, it, it's, it's frustrating. And at the same time, that's why I'm sitting here and, and you know, and I'm very, very new to this. I'm, uh, yeah, but, but just you but sitting just here and just sharing just injustice. a few gems that you've learned that goes a long way look at that and now imagine if you you weren't exposed to these gems and now you're just hearing this from imagine that same person or someone else does that's just that same you know body language like this and associates that with islam someone has no idea so then they carry that picture with them to the next person and then you see how these 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 uh, lies just keep on, you know, these misconceptions just keep right. growing. Right. We were talking earlier about this series of three videos of of, of the 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 um, religious professor, and he was presenting from the perspective of how how uh, Muslims see themselves, and, yeah. he, and it appears he did a very good job of it. And he made a comment in that video. He said, "Please, when you see somebody praying in an airport and prostrated in an airport praying." Don't call police security. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, my wife and I had to laugh, but, you know, think about it. That's how people see it, you, yeah. you know, and it's, it's. Uh, but that's it's how sad. Jesus prayed. I, exactly. And who was he praying to? He's praying to the, the creator, to the to one, the to creator. Allah. Yeah. So what about that now? So we covered uh, the one thing when I asked you about why Americans, you feel like choosing Islam, and you particularly, as an American, you were born in Boston? Or no, Michigan. I was born in Michigan. Michigan, raised in Boston, or how long have you been I was there? I was raised in Michigan. I've been in Boston. Uh, I moved out there for work about 17 years ago. 17 years ago. Beautiful place, I heard, Boston. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, so what other thing would you go ahead and say that uh, attracted you to Islam. So we talked about a few things here and there, but what, el what else would you say? Uh, many people get turned on to the, the worship and we cover that of just one God. That's easy. And I think that people nowadays, because they attribute um, important things with complication. I'll give you an example like uh, the tax system, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's just so complicated, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, the language of attorneys, you found it complicated, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the medical language and lingo that only uh, doctors can complicate it. But these are important matters, right? But then when you come down to God, people think it's got to be confusing, complicated. So just, it's blind faith. Close your eyes and just believe. Say hallelujah, that's it. But you don't have that with Islam. It's so no. easy that it's kind of like confusing. Like, hold on. Well, that, yeah, that was the biggest thing. That was the biggest thing, you know, like blind faith. I, w I had a hard time accepting that. And I think a lot of people do, especially, you, you know, if you if you have a scientific mind, phys you know, a physicist type type mind, analytical type mind, it's very hard to grasp that. You know, you want to see proof. You want to see proof. And um, faith, a lot of times, you know, especially in Christianity, is you just have to trust that you know, though certain things happened and, and have faith. Mm -hmm. And, and I, and I always said, I believed I always believed it, but I always questioned. I was afraid to say that I questioned, but I questioned. And what really attracted me was it was easy to say, I believe there's, you know, in monotheism, I believe there's one, one, one God. Um, but the, the, the biggest, I think, thing was that I could see proof we have a miracle in front of us. If you took, if you, if you really read the Quran in its full context, you know, in, in, um, if you listen to good sources out there, you're a fantastic source. Thank if you. you listen to other sources out there that, you know, um, the, the truth is there and it's very clear. It's very clear. And it's, and it, it's, it's a miracle that is one of the most magnificent miracles that, you can imagine when there's no way 14 over 1400 years ago an illiterate could have you know prophet muhammad peace be upon him could have could have known you know we didn't know a lot of these things till 50 100 years ago or less mm -hmm. so that you can't dispute in my yeah. mind that you cannot dispute that's so important because there are just really a few possibilities. Either Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, who was known by his community that he, he was unlettered, he couldn't read, he couldn't write. That was known, but he was known as the truthful. So the people who claim that now they are prophets from God, either they're the worst of people on humanity because they're lying against God, or they're the most righteous, the most pious. And we look at his life and that's what he was. So either he's making it up, or you got a group of people coming together to conspire to make the Quran, 
And then the third is either the devil made it. And you know that every time you recite the Quran, you're saying you're seeking refuge with God from the devil. And then you look at, there's a challenge in the Quran to produce something like it. Come, come on, examine it, find a contradiction. And you see that there's no way that it can come for any of these three. And on every page of the Quran, God Almighty's name is mentioned, calling you to be an upright and honest and just and righteous human being, opposite to what the devil wants you to be. So when you knock all these out systematically, and then what you talked about, the signs, the prophecies, all these mm -hmm. things compile the authenticity of the Quran. And we can go on and on and on. We come to where you hear where, where Bob is here because he was sincere and he's ready to say Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu rasulullah which I often uh, say if you were living during the time of Jesus there's a there's a really profound statement in the Bible I believe it's uh, John 17 3 where it says this is life eternal where Jesus is allegedly saying that this is life eternal that they may know you the only true God la ilaha illallah there's nothing worthy of worship except the one true God in Aramaic, the language of Jesus, Allah. In Arabic, Allah. There's no God worthy of worship except Allah. And at Jesus' time, you would say, Isa Rasulullah. And Jesus is the messenger of God. And you often have heard this statement that uh, Jesus, uh, they say, is like, He is the way, the truth, and the light. No one right. comes to the Father, God, except through Him. Of course, through His teachings. But now we extend that. The extension of that is Prophet Muhammad. So now for all of humanity, He's a mercy sent for all of mankind. And He is. Muhammad Rasulullah, the messenger of God. And there you have that Shahada said today. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah it's it's quite it's quite it's amazing. It's amazing. So more people uh um I'm just I'm, I'm really uh, I, I enjoy having these discussions. I said if people would give us a shot, you know, to go ahead and deliver this truth. I see a lot of times when people when people first accept Islam, sometimes it can be a hard reality because I know from my experience, I'm reading all of these signs. I'm reading all these things that just require some logic. This is not some voodoo stuff in the back that someone's mm -hmm. doing and these these fake healers and weird stuff that, you know, the guy's like doing some like uh, crazy stuff and 10 people are falling off the bleachers and stuff. If you see all these like, now yeah. I got the holy in me and whatnot. <laughs> right. uh, so none of that. This is just calling you to think, to be sincere, design in the case of designer. Someone created this. Turn to the one who created this. Ask him what's your purpose in life. Let him be your guide, the creator, and then start to do the research. You did that. You found it in Islam. If more people would do that, I'm sure if they were sincere, God, we, without a doubt, God will guide anyone who is sincere and looking for the truth. But now the challenge is because you have so many distractions. It's a nightmare of distractions out there. How did you get past all of the distractions? Money, a position. You have to go against all odds now because you were things are, thank God, working out with your family. But then, what's my coworkers? What are my friends? I might, you know, not have these this yeah. door closed on me. How did you get through that? And then at the same time, you know, just the distractions of we say dunya, the material world. Yeah. I don't think I am through it. I think I'm just beginning my journey, and and I and I expect, you know. Um, you know, I, I, I expect troubles or hardships al along the way, and, yeah. and um, you know that's okay. I mean, because I think that's just that just you know goes along with it, and, and it's not going to shake my faith because again, m my heart was hardened, and there's there's a difference in in how I view everything right now, and uh, you know the, the praying five times a day and grounding yourself and and making uh, getting getting connected to you know our creator five times a day is a beautiful practice of not being distracted by and, and you know and when you're living in a fast paced you know business environment you know you want to talk about uh, distractions you know you can go in in a million different directions yeah. and at the end of the day all you feel is you know high blood pressure <laughs> and uh, you know sometimes panic attacks so i don't feel that I feel I feel a lot of peace, and I feel like I can handle hardships, um, whether they be business and, and hardships with accepting this my, yes. my faith, that that you know you're able to handle those. Yeah. Um, you said something uh, that was really profound, also because you have some of the top entrepreneurs, billionaires, multimillionaires, preaching the importance of rest time as far as meditation yeah. you started doing meditation yes. but now the difference between actually meditating and now and we would call like dhikr like remembrance of god like uh, as opposed to you have salat the connection with god the prayer 
you were started doing the meditation, but what's the difference here between Salah, prayer, connection with God, and then the meditation? Yes. Well, you know, I think meditation was amazing. And, I, you know, and I was really surprised at how many times I saw meditation, you know, in, 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 the, in the Quran. And, um, but meditation was, was in many ways life changing for me because rather than using drugs, uh, Xanax or, or something to, to calm myself, um, I could use my, and it, for me it was mindfulness meditation, which was just focusing on my breathing and calming myself down. And um, I would do that as a morning practice, and then I would start to do it any time I was felting, I was having a you know meltdown during the day. I would close my door and do do it in my office. Um, now I have the opportunity five times a day to do really the same thing, except I'm giving glory to you know to Allah to God, my, you know, and 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 practice my faith. But it's it's different too. I still meditate. Um, but the prayer and, and prostrating yourself and completely releasing, you know, uh, meditation, mindfulness meditation is a breathing exercise. Yeah. The only way to completely evacuate the air from your system is to go into prostrating. Yeah. So deep breathing. This is real important. Yeah, really. yeah. And so, you know, the feeling you get, this calmness that comes yeah. over you, I feel like I, it's a similar effect, but more powerful that I can go back. And not only does my body feel better and calmer, but my mind is in a space that I can go handle mm -hmm. whatever needs to be handled. Yeah. Uh, how would you get people to, to really, because this is the, the crucial question that we try to motivate people to ask, like, why are you here in this world, right? At what point, like, why are you here and where are you going? You think you're just going to amass money, you're going to live life, but you're going to die, you know? What's it all about? You made the money, you had the big house, and you had all the f all the fun, sad times, good times, but then you die. What's the purpose? What's it all about? That's a difficult statement, um, you know, because I'll, I'll, I'll share with you, I didn't have any purpose. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I had uh, many, many goals in my life, um, mostly financial-related and career-related, and, you know, I met those and, you know, I was CEO for 16 years, which I think is a pretty long run as a CEO. You, you were the CEO of the company? I was CEO of a company, uh, yeah. you know, a, s a small to mid-sized company, but a global company. Yeah. So I was traveling the world and I started a manufacturing plant. And, but um, that was a whole focus of my life. And um, there was a lot of dysfunction in it. Uh, there was a lot of dysfunction. And... I honestly hated who I was. I, I felt my family would honestly be better off without me. And in my heart, I felt this. And um, now it, I, I can't believe that I would feel something like that with w w what I have and you know, what I can you know, share and, and be there for my family and what me being around means to my family, um, that didn't exist, you know. Mm -hmm. And I walked away from that, that position, making a lot of money. I resigned um, and went through a lot of financial troubles to, to you know, a um, lot, of, lot of struggles. Um, but I got to the point where there was something missing in my life. When you get to the point where you feel that you, you, your family, the people you love the most, are much better off without you, there's something wrong. That's there's how you were feeling, huh? Yes. Yeah. And, and, and anybody that I would talk to, any of my friends or any of my family, would say to me, you have a real problem because you have what anybody else would want. I mean, you, people, would, people would do anything for your position. And I had the freedom. I, I could do really whatever I want, and I got to see beautiful places around the world and all over the world and no contentment none none was there a void a huge void do you have are and, you sh and, and, and shame yeah you know how how i was doing business i didn't believe in um the dysfunction of you know the environment uh, you know alcohol um y you know just many things that were not what i was proud of what i was yeah. shameful of uh huh. Wow. This is. Uh, I mean, I can go on and on. Just a couple more things. I mean, so now, uh, let's. Uh, Jesus. How is your relationship with Jesus now? Because this is a key figure in Christianity. 
So now we take it to Islam. And many people think, okay, you, you've lost salvation. He came to die for your sins. Well, what do you say to that? Absolutely not. I have a better understanding, uh, but absolutely not. I mean, Jesus is, is one of the greatest prophets you know, along with many other prophets that are that are in the Bible. And this is one one of the biggest misconceptions that I had. You know, I, I, I honestly would say there's no way I'm going to worship Allah because I never understood Allah was God. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that never yeah. as, as ignorant as that sounds. That's what I believed. And I think there are many other people out there that that believe the same thing. But n no, the love I have for Jesus and, and, and the message that he brought, y you know, no, is stronger than stronger than it ever was. Mm -hmm. When you hear the word like Trinity, what is that? You know, how are you? Yeah. For, for me now, I just that it's one thing I had. I had an issue with. I don't believe um, I, I don't believe that Jesus or excuse me, that that God would put um, could put his son through come in the form of a man and put through what he was put through and be considered god in, incarnate and and you know the 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 trinity just does not make sense to me it never never did it was one of the things i had uh, a big complication with and idolatry you know to put to put face to 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 these things and put an image to these things and to worship these things I didn't understand and it and I and I always did have that central my my relationship is my relationship with God so those things never made sense they yeah. do make they are very clear for me now so we got Bob here on the Dean show Bob walks and you see that uh, he's a Muslim he doesn't have to I mean you know, even though we see Jesus with the thobe and the beard and, you know, he looks like present day Muslims today, but Islam is not about changing your DNA. He's not turning into an Arab. He's an American, right? <laughs> He's Muslim. He likes nice suits like I do, right? <laughs> so we don't have to start dressing. It's not, a Muslim is not someone who has to turn Pakistani or Indian or whatnot. I mean, those are all our brothers, but at the end of the day, you are, uh, you're, you're a Muslim, you're American. And you're following the way of Jesus and the last and final message of Prophet Muhammad, which all, I mean, simple as that. That 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 testimony that is for those out there, as simple as, as we, we talked about it, is that pure monotheism. And at the end of the day, when someone wants to testify what's in their very nature, right? You testify uh, that this person took your wallet to front of the police. Can you fill out a description? You, uh, you, you testify in the courtroom. You promise to swear to tell the whole truth. Nothing but the truth, so I hope you got yes. But now, will you testify that the Creator, Allah, this is my Creator, and I'm not going to put up anyone between me and my Creator. This is just one. Why would someone be ashamed of that? I mean, you see, you unconsciously do some things, but that's it. And this is something that you've been saying, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. That's it. Have you been saying, do you know how to say it by now? I bear witness that nothing is worthy of worship except Allah, the Creator, God, and Muhammad is the messenger. The messenger. Yes. Would you like to share that? Say it. I, uh, I I can't say it in Arabic, but I would say it with you. Yes, let's do it. So, <laughs> okay. uh, I I testify. I testify that there's nothing worthy of worship. That there's nothing worthy of worship except God Almighty Allah. But God Almighty Allah. And I testify. And I testify that Muhammad. That Muhammad is his messenger. His messenger. La ilaha. Ali, Allah, Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Uh, I'm sorry. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. An la. An la. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashhadu. Wa ashhadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammad. Muhammad. Rasulullah. Rasulullah. That's simple. And it, and it, and if you were speaking the language of Jesus in Aramaic, you would have been saying something very similar because the English language didn't exist. I'm going to have to visit you, God willing, in Boston sometime. Absolutely. This was a pleasure. <laughs> thank you so much. It was so nice meeting you. you it was a pleasant surprise. We thank our brother, yes, Dean Muhammad, yes, for hooking us up. This is fantastic. And guys, thank you for tuning in. And if you're out there and you want to connect with us, follow us every week, call in. If you want to learn more, 
open the love, open the mind, and we'll see you next time. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell and leave your takeaways, the things that you've taken away from this episode. Share them in the comments. If you want to spend, send some love to our brother Bob, also interact. We'll see you next time. Until then, peace be with you. Salaam Alaikum.